best part being out in San Diego, out where I'm at, no one else is. When you're out on tour, you got everybody on top of you, living under someone in the bus, on the plane. Need a break from all that. Miss those stages. Miss those faces in the crowd. Come back. Do something we've never done before. Not only is this 10 years of being a band for us, the significance of this tour beyond having those highs and having those lows that you have for being together for 10 years, and it also represents us lasting. <laughs> On our way up to LA, check in with the agent, Matt Anderson. See what's going on, make sure everything's all set for this tour. I'm trying to get the exact dates. See if we can little gap. squeeze it on in there. If you don't mind sending me those dates, I can wrap everything on my app way before that. This is the pinnacle moment where you're gonna see if you're not there, you're not gonna be a part of this chapter that we're embarking on. This is the turning point. This isn't Carnifex 2.0, this isn't like the second part because the band's already had so many chapters, but it's gonna be a key turning point for where Carnifex is gonna go next. Uh, we're just south of downtown LA, about to pull into Todd Junker's shop, Junker Designs, to pick up our new stage rigs. What we have in store is something that's gonna be really cool. It's different than what we've done before, and this time we got lights and other things. I don't wanna spill the beans, but uh, we have some cool stuff. We have really good ideas. Todd, what's up, man? What's up? Good to Welcome. see you, dude. Yeah, I'll awesome. take a look at your stuff. Yeah, show me the shop. The headliner is going to be different, first of all, in the fact that it's with the same lineup on two continents. We've never, we've never been able to do that before. We're, we're upping our stage production. We're trying to give more of a visual appeal. We're just trying to give you a little bit more. The band's been around for 10 years, and you know all those albums reflect growth. All of them reflect passion. They reflect what uh, you know what the guys were influenced by when uh, when they wrote those songs. You know, both personally, emotionally, musically, and I'm I'm stoked to be a part of it. This is uh, the map of all the places I can remember that Carnifex has played. Um, this probably should be about 100 more pins, but I just can't remember. The past uh, of Carnifex. Definitely, it, it shapes the way we're going because we've already done the things we know we're not supposed to do. <laughs> I need an Ibanez logo, and I need to hit up our Mesa Boogie rep. Um, we did Revolver in there too for a giveaway. And that should round it out. We got a gear company, media partner, merchandiser. Doing a headlining tour, that's enabling us to put those emotions on display. Physically wear them on our sleeve sweat them out, perform them with the crowd, with the audience right there, giving back to them the way they gave to us when the band was struggling and when I thought the band was done. I joined a little bit later in the game. You know, I've only, I've been a part of the band for a couple of years now and you know, these guys have been out grinding for, uh, you know, for 10, 10 years. I have a huge amount of respect for their dedication to the band to put in that time to not give up. If you mess up at all, you're the headliner. People expect the greatness because you're playing last. It's phony up there. What a big old phony. We had a show cancel in Chicago, and we were driving from Chicago through Indianapolis when our transmission blew. And at the time, we couldn't get tour support, and we had enough money to cover the repair, but that meant we'd be broke. And then at the same time, we were depending on the money from our shows to even continue on. So we had to leave the van in a transmission shop, rent a U-Haul, and only one person can drive the U-Haul because that's who it's registered under. So the rest of us had to sleep in mattresses in the back of the U-Haul, and it's in the middle of the summer. So we're in our underwear, sweating on these, sweating straight through these mattresses. And then we got back to the van and continued the tour. And looking back on it now, we survived. We made it. We're here at Wonderland Studios in Anaheim, California, uh, taking some promo photos for our upcoming headliner. 
nothing ever goes perfectly, so you try and look back at the things that didn't go well that maybe could have gone better, and you try and alleviate the problem before it happens. People like the past label we were with, um, people who booked us who screwed us over, promoters who didn't pay us thinking that we're just a bunch of assholes who have plenty of money, and we do this because we feel like it. Like, and the fact that I gave up everything to do this and people can be so easy as to just brush us off and not do anything like we're not important. Really, we just built a band outside of the wall and pretty much everyone met us out there. And the fans that we have, the people that support us, those are people that are all on the outside with us. To have our fans right there with us, you know, cheer, cheering us on, you know, going going nuts, you know, that's, that's one of the best feelings in the world. We're giving everything and more. We need you to be a part of it. We need you to be there. Here we are. We're back. We're better than we were. We're a little bigger than we were. And that feels good because uh, I think another 10 years would be sick. And yeah, we're stronger than ever. So I'm excited to see what's, uh, what the future holds for us. Being able to go out live, be a part of those people's lives the way they've been a part of our lives and, and enabled us to be on these stages around the world, that's what's the most important part to me. And knowing they've been there when no one in the industry was, that's what makes me want to give them the best to where we can.